Hi, I'm Elaine Vickers and welcome to my video series on cancer treatments. In this video, I'll describe a group of immunotherapies called immune checkpoint inhibitors. Let's start with some background on T cells. T cells have over 200 different proteins sticking out of their surface, obviously a whole lot smaller than I've shown. Even more mind boggling than the number of different proteins is the number of copies of each one. For example, there are about 100,000 copies of the T cell receptor on the surface of each T cell. These are the receptor proteins that T cells use to connect with a cell it wants to destroy. T cells also come in different types. If they have a protein called CD8 on their surface, they are cytotoxic T cells, which can kill other cells directly. If they have CD4 on their surface, they're helper T cells and they guide and coordinate other white blood cells. T cells also have lots of checkpoint proteins on their surface, which help control how they behave. This is important because cytotoxic T cells are extremely powerful. They are excellent at killing virus infected cells and cancer cells, but they're also dangerous. If the wrong ones become active, they might cause an autoimmune disease. Even if the right ones are made, you want them to do their job and then stop and ideally go away or die when they're finished. If they don't, they're going to cause chronic inflammation. That's why our T cells have checkpoint proteins, so that our body has a way to control which T cells are activated and for how long. Some checkpoint proteins are stimulatory. When they connect with their partner protein on another cell, the T cell becomes more active and more likely to kill cells in its vicinity. Others are inhibitory. If an inhibitory checkpoint protein connects with its partner, then the T cell becomes less active and it might even die. By the way, if you like my teaching style and you want some education for your team, then do get in touch. There are links in the description below. Checkpoint inhibitors are a group of immunotherapies that block the connection between an inhibitory checkpoint protein and its partner protein on another cell. Sometimes the checkpoint inhibitor does this by attaching to a checkpoint protein on the T cell itself. Proteins like CTLA-4 or PD-1 or LAG-3. Sometimes they attach to the partner protein, which is on a different cell, like PDL1. Inside tumors, sometimes white blood cells like macrophages have PDL1 on their surface. Sometimes it's cancer cells, sometimes it's both. Whatever the type of cell, the antibody will attach. Now, this might sound like a foolproof strategy, guaranteed to keep T cells active for longer but there are two major limitations to the checkpoint inhibitor group of treatments. One is that they don't work for most of the people they are given to, and two, they can cause dangerous side effects. I'll start with the first problem. You might remember from the video, how does our immune system spot cancer cells, that for T cells to kill a cancer cell, they need to recognize it. They do this by detecting small fragments of abnormal proteins called neoantigens displayed in cup-shaped structures called MHC proteins on the cancer cell surface. But not every cancer produces or displays neoantigens. A T cell might come along, check the cancer cell's MHC cups, find nothing strange and pass on by. Other cancer cells are protected by suppressive white blood cells like regulatory T cells and myeloid derived suppressor cells, which act as the cancer cells bodyguards, holding back the cancer fighting T cells. So even if a checkpoint inhibitor gives a boost to the T cells, the treatment might not work. There may be no neoantigens for the T cells to recognize or not enough T cells, or the T cells can't get to where they're needed or become suppressed or exhausted, or they're suppressed by their enemies, the regulatory T cells, the myeloid derived suppressor cells. This is why checkpoint inhibitors only help a relatively small proportion of patients. The second limitation is side effects, which are unpredictable and sometimes lifelong. 
These happen when the wrong T cells are activated by the checkpoint inhibitor. And instead of recognizing cancer cells, they start reacting to healthy cells. This can lead to an autoimmune disease or chronic inflammation. And the truth is when you give someone a checkpoint inhibitor, you don't know what T cells are going to be boosted by your treatment. You hope it's the cancer fighting T cells, but it could be T cells that attack healthy tissues instead. CTLA-4 antibodies tend to activate T cells that are in lymph nodes, bean-shaped pockets of tissue found throughout our body where white blood cells talk to each other and coordinate their actions. PD-1 and PDL-1 antibodies generally activate T cells out in the organs and tissues, places like the lungs, the skin and the gut. This is why immune-related side effects of checkpoint inhibitors often affect those same tissues. Despite all of this, checkpoint inhibitors have become an incredibly important group of treatments. One cancer in which they work particularly well is melanoma skin cancer. Melanoma is often caused by UV light from the sun, which creates thousands of mutations in the cell's DNA. The cancer cells usually display a lot of neoantigens, and they tend to be surrounded by cytotoxic T cells rather than by enemies. With a boost from a checkpoint inhibitor, these T cells can destroy the cancer. To recap, immune checkpoint inhibitors are antibody-based treatments that can boost T cells by preventing and reversing T cell suppression. For many people, they don't work, either because the right T cells aren't there or because they're blocked in other ways that don't involve the checkpoint proteins. These treatments can also cause unpredictable and sometimes long-lasting side effects. But for some people, especially people with melanoma skin cancer, these treatments have made a huge difference, even offering the chance of cure. Don't forget, if you like my teaching style and want some education for your team, find me on LinkedIn or contact me through my website. There are links in the description below.